so hi one of the good noise podcast i'm shane i'm glory and we're here with i'm jade from oso oso we're gonna ask some questions today about their new album sore thumb so congrats on that by the way how do you feel about the response to it so far thank you uh it's been awesome uh nobody is is uh you know nobody that i love or is close to me has hurt my feelings about it so that's a win that's good that's good always a win yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art um the title sore thumb is just uh just goes off of a couple things it was kind of like a, a reference to one this this injury i got back in the, like a couple years ago at a band practice with like uh playing around with one of my bandmates like i injured my thumb and had to go on tour the next day Oh. So it never kind of healed right. So I always kind of had like this like weird like I have like this dislocation in like my like left thumb wow. um, that I like to like blame on like going on tour and not getting it healed right. So it's like the idea of it being like it's the sore thumb of the Oso album is like kind of just like stick out and uh, it would definitely be like a, a different kind of album once it was I knew what the deal was mm -hmm. with the release and everything. Yep. Awesome. And then and the cover art. Oh, and the cut. So the cover art. I actually, uh, believe it or not, I was like super stoned one night on Reddit liminal space, uh, and just saw this picture that like I thought was really cool. So I reached out to the person. I like made a whole Reddit account and everything like that just to reach out to this person, and just basically explain the deal and said like, "Hey, I play in this band." Uh, we are putting out an album we have like a budget so we can pay you to use this photo if you're if you'd be cool with it and um it was this dude named alfred and he was super nice and he was totally down he was kind of like uh beyond cool about it he's just like oh yeah whatever you need let me know like so it all worked out good that was sick that's, that's sick. amazing yeah um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for this album mm -hmm. um this so this album uh it was mostly it was pretty much all written like in the studio in that month because the month that we were recording it and demoing it uh the whole goal it was basically mainly like writing focused um there's a i i think i i probably came in with a riff like riffs here or there because there's the only song that i really remember starting like kind of finishing it before going into the studio was the song nothing to do and then everything else feels like it was like written in the studio. Mm -hmm. But I was on my phone the other day and uh, I was like watching this old video I had of me playing guitar to my dog. And I was playing like the riff from the last song on the album. So I, it's like I know I like I definitely had to have like a couple ideas or riffs brought in there. And then it was just kind of building around that. But it was pretty loose. It was like it was really cool that we had all that time to be there in, in the studio in that kind of environment because like when you're hanging out there and you're not rushed uh it's cool to kind of feel like oh you know what like let's just try and make a different a completely different song than what we were doing today and there's a couple times where like we might have been recording guitar for a certain song and then it just turned into like hey can i just try this thing out and then that ended up being like an entirely different another song like branching out of that um there's a couple that i know we wrote and record like that like pensacola comes to mind mm -hmm. we were just recording uh drums for like something and then like it, it just went into can i try this on piano and stuff like that very cool i like wow that. so it was very very fluid there was like no plan in place basically right yeah it was kind of, it was it was it was more so like a. You know, if we try something and it doesn't it doesn't work out or nothing productive ends up coming out of this today, like that's all right. And I don't think uh, every other time that I've ever been like in a studio or something like that, it's kind of been like on a tighter budget with less time. So there wasn't really time to kind of have that um, just like freeness, I guess. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of like that relaxed vibe. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm happy you finally had that experience. It's oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I want you to tell us your favorite lyric off this album and the meaning behind it. I it's so crazy because I like I don't really think about this stuff that often, 
but I was actually just thinking about this the other day and I had one like exactly that was my favorite mm-hmm. yeah. um, on the album. But if with this album, I would probably just have to, uh, I think the first lyric on the album, the nothing goes quite like I planned it, think I took your love for granted, little rowboat. I think uh, I really like that that lyric right now in my life because that I'm singing about music. The the little rowboat is kind of like, you know, is like, I hate the word like fans seem so silly, but like is the people who listen to Oso and support it and come to the shows and like they're the little rowboat because they kind of keep me going gently up the stream was like the yeah. idea behind that lyric. Um, and when I'm not, when I'm not like embracing that love or like, you know, did like taking some kind of purpose out of that um, or like taking it for granted, I think I, I kind of allow my life to go a little bit off the rails or like my, my mental health or my sanity to go off the rails. Uh, so right now with the album coming out and um, like going to meet up with everybody in practice right now and, and just kind of be your, involved in in the band and and touring and like be around people who uh, receive the music positively i think that's like but that's probably it's it's an alive lyric in my head right now if that makes sense yeah that's a very good lyric yeah uh so how the track list for the album come about did you guys write the opener be the opener closer be the closer did you shuffle around see what fits what was that process like um i think i i i like to say like that nothing's final or something like that but i definitely think i love i love the arc of like an album you know mm-hmm. i love the whole like the construction of like track lists and stuff like that so for me it's almost like it's impossible to not kind of be writing a song and have an idea of like oh this will be in the middle of the album or this will this is for like the beginning mm-hmm. like um like computer exploder 100 percent. i was trying to write the first song for the album um, and then same with Carousel, with it being the last song, I was like 100% new. Like the whole reason I think that song ends the way it does because I knew it would be the last song on the album. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's definitely definitely things that like you probably keep in mind when you're, when you're trying to do that, when you're trying to write something that's like opening an album and closing an album. Um, and then there's some that it's like you don't know exactly where it's going to be, but you have a feeling like, oh, this will be maybe in the in the middle or like this will, you know, this will try it. We'll put this towards the end to try and keep the energy up or something like that. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so would you be able to tell us where Headspace was at while you were creating this album? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I was uh, I was just kind of trying to to like chase happiness in a way or just chase like you know what i mean chase like myself enjoying what i was doing in terms of like playing music and stuff um at the time like the only music i had really done in the pandemic besides we played like a couple live stream shows at the beginning um but it was mostly just like me like recording like these old simple covers uh and I would just have to use like kind of weird things to like build percussion on them. Like, um, like just like, you know, tapping on like a guitar, like shakers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was super fun building, building stuff in that way. And then when everything came about, the album pretty much got recorded because I was like, Oh shit, I kind of ran out of money and had to go. It was either I had to like work or I could go to studio for a month and take rent money out of like the recording budget. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm-hmm you know, that sounds like a way better time. Maybe I'll enjoy music after that, after a month of doing that. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. It was just kind of just like doing what feels good and and, uh, and just trying to be in love with like what I was making, you know what I mean? Or at least be in love with like the process of like hanging out in the studio that month and, and making songs. Um, and with with the idea that like, when we were in the studio at the time, the idea that we'd be going back to either the same studio or, or a different studio and like doing the thing like for real, uh, 
I think that kind of made it, like I said, so that it's just like, okay, we have this song with the silly Gatorade lyric, like, ah, oh, let's just finish it. Let's see it out and like go all the way with it. And then, you know, we could just scrap it. So I think that was kind of, it's like, oh yeah, you know what? This lyric sounds like it's a little bit silly, but like everyone is, you know, like we're all laughing and stuff and we're all having a good time. Like, let's just finish this song. Mm -hmm. So I think just kind of like staying true to like chasing that type of feeling or like happiness was like kind of where the headspace was. You you had mentioned like this, this uh, whole album process, like made you like enjoy making music again. Were you kind of like losing that enjoyment during the pandemic? Yeah, I think the pandemic, it was just kind of felt like, uh, I think, I, I think personally my hands were just tied because like, I felt like I'd spent like, you know, like most of my adult life doing this. I uh, don't really have like a, a college degree or anything like that. So it just kind of felt like um, I can't go out and like play music and do this thing that like is now my, at the time is like has finally become my job. And I can't, it's like, and we have these tours books. So in case the world does go back to normal, like tomorrow, then I won't be able to go, you know what I mean? I won't be able to go on tour or like work this or like get a job here because I might have to go on tour. Um, so I think I was just in a point in my life where I was frustrated. And when you're frustrated like that, I think you try and find like the scapegoat. And uh, when the scapegoat doesn't have to necessarily be like a person or something like that, it could just be a decision that you made. I feel like, which is like with me was like pursuing music. I think it was just easy for me to kind of, be angry at it um you know it's like it's the reason why i was stressed out and struggling and like not able to like pay bills uh it was easy for me to like look at it like that and i had never had to really look at it through a lens like that it was always kind of this like dream that i'm pursuing where wouldn't it be nice uh to be able to do this and like make a little bit of money off of it mm -hmm. and isn't it funny how quickly you know yeah how quick yeah. you could take stuff like that for granted mm -hmm. but yeah, I think I think that's where the the disillusionment or something like that with music came for me. Then, mm -hmm. well, I hope you're feeling better about it now. Yeah, uh, um, I, de I I definitely feel uh, there's just like like I was talking about before, like there's just and it, it's something like even though I sing it on that song, then it's it's not, not even a concept I can fully grasp now. But there's just such an importance of me doing this for my like mental health and, and sanity and um, not being, not like just diving deep into my uh, depression and kind of like self wallowing in it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, de I definitely feel there's definitely, um, I don't know. I'm just more aware at how, I don't know. Anytime I try, I, I feel myself start to like, fall out of love with music it just kind of seems like i could view it from a bigger picture and kind of be more grounded in it mm -hmm. oh, makes sense uh, so because your writing process for this album was so fluid do you think if you guys had a more stricter schedule recording with it do you think that would have might have pushed you away from music because you would have viewed it more as a job than a pleasure i guess it, it definitely could have i think I think it would just really, it really be dependent on what the end product was that came out with it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I think with this album, uh, the thing that's so unique about it for me and the reason why, like, I think I'll always have a lot of love for it and I'm so happy with how it came out was because of that, that whole yeah. process, like spending that time. Um, it's kind of like almost like, uh, it's like getting to like relive through that through that time through certain things like there's a lot of things on the record that's just like like there's beeps and whistles and stuff here and there that uh a lot of times are just moments that like kind of randomly got into the song because something happened yeah um that i just hear every time i hear it i remember it you know what i mean so i think that just really keeps me uh keeps me in love with it in terms of the record, I think if we didn't have that much time, then maybe some of the choices that we made and maybe some of the songs that, or the way that the songs turned out, they don't turn out that way. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you know, without without all the memories that are attached to this record, it's like it definitely becomes a little bit something else for me. I don't know. Yeah. It's, a, it's 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 kind of like a, it's interesting. It's like a hypothetical, hard to te- hard to know. You know what I mean? What would happen mm-hmm. with it? But I definitely could see if we had if we were more pressed for time. I think it'd be an entirely different experience that would be hard to uh, it hard to it it'd be hard to come close to feeling the same way about it that I do now. You know, yeah, whether I was sure. happy about it or not. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so this question should be super, super quick off the top of your head. I want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words, no more, no less. Um, an interesting time. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so in the same train of thought, is there a certain feeling or emotion you want this album to invoke in your listeners? Um. I just hope, I hope people, I hope if someone listens to it for the first time, they come away feeling like there is a, a lot more there than what they heard on the first time, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. That makes you know, sense. it's like, it's like, a, if people, if someone feels like they don't like it or if they like it or whatever, that's, that's fine. I would just hope that if somebody does listen to it and somewhat enjoys it, they feel like okay, that was good, but I don't feel like I have it. Almost like the same way you meet a person and it's like, you know, first impressions or something. I hope I hope that they just feel like there's something deeper to explore there and, uh, and that they want to, hopefully, you know? Yeah. All right. It's perfect. Uh, like, I like the idea of, um, like, my favorite type of movies or music or whatever it's like it doesn't matter if it's like if it makes me laugh or cry or something as long as if, if it's something that i like think about or want to revisit um mm-hmm. and think about like maybe how they made it or what people who are making it were trying to say i think that's always super fun for me um so that's kind of i just hope that the, the idea of somebody doing that with the record is really cool to me yeah cool. basically a record that you that you want somebody to like pick up the booklet out of the the cd case or read the little insert in the vinyl just to get as much information as they can from that yeah. album yeah i yeah, get it that's like that'd be awesome yeah hell yeah yeah i love that uh so what is your favorite memory that you made while creating this album oh wow oh it's so hard it's it's literally so hard to choose I can't I really like to think of a specific one is is crazy there's a a specific one that I think that you could hear is like the song all love we recorded a lot of that like live and I was on acid when I was recording it and uh there's just like a lot of weird things that we did like there's a a part where you hear like clicking on the floor and stuff like that um and that was like, there was like a broken part of the studio floor. And I was just like singing the vocals and picking up these like broken floorboards from the floor and then throwing them like back down, like trying to do it like in rhythm. Yeah. Uh, I think at one point Tavish opens like a, a beer or a soda can, like into a microphone mm-hmm. to make like this weird like noise. Yeah. Um, I know at the end of it, like you hear this little beeping that's kind of like on time with the music, but that was like, literally we had uh cameras going on mm-hmm. and that was just a um that was like a camera of ours dying like oh uh so like you hear like the camera die and then you hear tavish crack up which is like something that i always loved mm-hmm. uh that night it was just like that was a really fun night and the last time that i was talking to my friend billy who helped us make the record mm-hmm. about like what what our favorite moments and stuff like that was we were talking about that for a while so that was the one that like popped out in my head to speak of but i feel like i have uh stories from that month that will like literally probably like last me a lifetime mm-hmm. like you know yeah. it sounds That's like it good. we only we only scraped the the surface and it sounds like you you could talk about it for hours yeah <laughs> uh, so for these last couple of questions we're actually going to shift away from music if that's okay with you mm-hmm all right, so we're actually going to go straight to death row. Boom. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? With it, with a drink? Mm-hmm. With a drink. Um, drink, I'd probably go Diet Coke because when I'm feeling like celebratory or whatever, 
uh, like having a nice meal, like I'll, I'll, I'll go for diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Um, I, <laughs> I don't want this answer to define me because it's just literally what I'm thinking of right now, but I probably just get like two corn dogs and like a side of like, like a good side, like uh string beans, but like, like cooked, you know what I mean? Like, like cooked string beans and some nice, like, I don't know. Like kind of like, you know what I mean? Like Cajun, like string yeah. beans, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know why I just go two corn dogs. I've been having corn dogs this week. I just bought like a box of uh, six corn dogs and I've been eating a corn dog for lunch like every day this week right before I left for this tour. So it's just popped into my head. I mean, that's fair. I had my first corn dog this weekend and it was amazing. So I completely first, get first it. ever first ever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. It was amazing. Life changing. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so it's just like yeah, it's just so nice and easy and convenient. And I just keep picturing like two of them on a plate with the the string beans and like a little bit of mustard like on the plate. It just seems like a nice way to go out of this life. Sure. I hope I Have hope you, you get had... lots of corn dogs on tour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried the Korean corn dogs? I was not only have I tried them, there was about a, a it was maybe a year ago from now. Uh, I kept trying to convince my friends to uh, give me money so I could open one of them because <laughs> they were like, they were franchising all around the Northeast. And I was like, oh shit, this is going to pop off. Dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm pro corn dog. <laughs> As you should be. As you should be. Yeah. Uh, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? one fictional world for a week oh man I, I know where it would be but i wouldn't want to live there I, I go like gotham city or something like that oh yeah you but i wouldn't i don't i think i'd want to live there you know mm-hmm. i just feel like it'd be crazy to live in a city that is under like some domestic terrorism threat <laughs> every week like, oh yeah that's so much fun it's yeah that'd be insane but it's and it's always like the most like eccentric characters and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, no, no, no. I, I switch. I, I would live in Middle Earth with the hobbits, probably. There you That's go. I the thing is, I'm not super. My friend who's in the car with me right now is like really into Lord of the Rings, and I'm not uh, like super well versed in Lord of the Rings like that, but I do know that i everything that they say about the hobbits in the first book like it's pretty much me <laughs> all right yeah it's perfect very good yeah they're always smoking weed too and like all that stuff mm-hmm. i'd probably just go hang out with them yeah that'd all be right. pretty chill but, so i have the honor of asking the last question every single person we've spoken to has actually said it is the most important question what is your favorite color I don't want to overthink it. It's it's like a teal turquoise. Ooh, that's a good color. It's you know what I mean. It's mm-hmm. like you know some people would say teal, some people would say turquoise. Um, but that's you know you could picture that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's guys are getting what I'm saying. You know, Picking yeah, that's, that's like my my all time favorite. I would say. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, so as Gloria said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um. No, I don't know. I, Not the album. I, I hope the tour. Yeah, yeah the, socials. The out. <laughs> got the new album out. Uh, sore thumb, going on tour. Um, this week with the Menzingers and Sincere Engineer. That's gonna be super fun. Um, yeah. If, if you know anyone listened to this, thank you for listening or watching. And you know, if you listen to the music, thank you for listening to the music. Um, yeah. Oh yeah! All Perfect. Right. Oh, well. and, th- and thank you both for for asking me awesome questions and stuff like that. Of course, of course, this was a lot of fun. Good ones. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for now. That's been Jade from Oso Oso, and we have been the Good Noise Podcast. <laughs>